It's been several weeks since I've been able to put up a video on the construction of the observatory, and it has been frankly a wild time. As I mentioned about a month ago, I fell into a hole on my way out to the observatory one night and injured my leg pretty good. I'm mostly healed up now. I still have a bit of a lump at the time of the making of this video, but it really is nearly done. And as you can see, the observatory is nearing completion. I'm in the final stages of building the split roof. I built one half of the frame about a month ago so that I could have something to hang a tarp off of and keep the inside of the observatory dry because at the time we had a tropical storm rolling in and it was expected to be really severe. And at the time of filming this, there was a hurricane moving in. So I was building the other side of the roof to beef up the observatory strength even more. Now to be frank, I built this entire structure to be strong, to be really strong. That's why I built internal walls, over reinforced all the framing. There are about 50% more struts in the walls than there would have been with an ordinary build. Everything has been built to be really strong because I've been through hurricanes before and they're rough. And I want the observatory to be able to stand up to the weather. So all I have to do is finish making this half of the roof frame. And then I'm going to batten it down to the main frame of the observatory, throw a couple heavy tarps over it and anchor them down with cargo straps. And I expect the observatory will ride out the hurricane pretty well. In fact, the hurricane hit us about a week ago. So I can tell you the observatory did ride it out just fine. So the construction of each side of the roof is a little atypical, shall we say? I'm taking a bit of a different approach to building the roof than is usually taken. There are not going to be any fancy overhangs or anything. The frame itself is oversized to overhang the main body of the observatory about one inch on every side to form a drip edge. And the structure itself is only five feet and four inches in each direction. Now I built the structure to those dimensions with a specific plan in mind. If I had gone with 8x8, eight eight, which is the size of the deck that I'm standing on, the math indicated that each side of the roof would have weighed about 250 pounds and that would have required sophisticated railing, along with some kind of wheel system to reduce the efforts of moving the roof around. However, by making the observatory 5x4x5, five four five four, each roof half weighs only 50 pounds. That's a big difference. And I'm either going to simply slide the roof on and off without any type of wheels whatsoever, or if I feel it needs a little relief, I'll put a single wheel at the center of each split to take just a little weight off the roof. Now, some persons have told me I shouldn't let wood slide along wood, but you know what? I play the fiddle and fiddles hundreds of years old have pegs that are just wood sliding along wood. That's fine. The wood will smooth out, essentially polish itself with wear and tear, and the roof will become easier to move over time. I don't know. We'll see which plan works best. A single wheel toward the center of each split to let off some of the weight or let the split roof slide directly along the wood. Now inside the observatory, I'll create a track, a piece of two by two wood along the inside of each roof part, just to serve as a guide to help make sure that the roof goes into place properly. When I pull the roof off, it'll land on a sort of landing pad on the outside of the observatory. And I'm going to use a kind of polymer cable to serve as shock absorbers. And should I slip and drop a roof in the course of moving it, they'll also catch it and keep it from hitting the ground and potentially breaking. So at this point, both roof frames are completed. And now I'm shaping and cutting out the sheathing, in this case, a gable for one of the roof sides. And when the gables are done, I'll cut out a single sheet to form the roof itself. I've looked at a lot of potential roof covers, uh, everything from a steel roof. I have some steel roofing left over from a roofing job I did on my house earlier in the summer. And I looked at various kinds of EPDM and other quick glue-on roofs. In the end, I decided to go with liquid rubber. It's durable and it'll make the lightest rooftop possible. The intention here is to keep the roof strong but light to make it easy to move. However, here in rural Canada, nobody nearby sells liquid rubber, so I'm going to have to order it in. That's okay, Amazon works wonders, and it'll be here in a few days. For now, this is marine grade plywood, and it's strong enough to withstand a few weeks of exposure to the sun and the rain. Though, to keep it extra safe, I intend to keep a tarp over it when the observatory is not actually in use. So what we're going to do from here is put each roof side on top of the observatory and just let it provide shelter to the equipment. And when the liquid rubber eventually arrives, we'll take the roofs back down and paint on the primer and the liquid rubber. A day later, the roofs will be ready to put back on top. We'll bolt down the inner rails 
and set up the safety shock absorbers and the landing pads for the roof. Then finally I can do a door and the observatory's done. It's about 95% done now, it's hard to believe. This project I started at the beginning of summer is coming to fruition. There's a little bit of inner work to do. I need to build a fold out shelf to hold the laptop when I'm in there aligning the telescope. Alignments will not have to be done all that often once the project is completed, which is nice, but occasionally I'm sure I'll have to get in there and work on things. So because space will be tight, there'll just be a fold out shelf to hold a laptop occasionally and a small watertight cabinet to hold the electronics. And here's the observatory, nearly finished. I have to say it's simple, but I hope it's effective and I'm proud of it. So I guess that's what matters. Thanks for watching. Now that the observatory is nearly done, we'll get back soon to filming the stars and talking about astronomy and astrophotography, because that's what we're all interested in anyway, isn't it? And one last little bit of news that I personally think is kind of exciting. The Sky Story Channel is now the first official affiliate of Telescopes Canada. I've bought almost everything I use for astrophotography from Telescopes Canada, and I've always been hugely impressed by their passion for astrophotography, their knowledge of the products they sell, and their fast service. I mean, the Skywatcher EQ6R mount that I ordered from them last year, they shipped in about 30 minutes. Those guys are seriously fast. That's pretty typical for them. Anyway, it's a great company and I believe in them. And if you're thinking of ordering astrophotography gear, I highly recommend them. And if you use the affiliates link below in the description when you place the order, we get a small commission. It doesn't cost you any more, but it does help us to produce the Sky Story channel. All right, thanks for watching. Now get up there and shoot the sky.